Okay, Jack here from the Scorecast Linux. We're back with Sarah from Hot Pod Yoga in their lovely hot pod. And we're looking today at building specifically shoulder strength for our handstands and inversions. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you click below. And if you haven't checked out Hot Pod Yoga, click on their link, which is in the description below. And we'll get started with this week's lesson. So we're going to look specifically at shoulder strength for um, pressing out of these um, frog or, or crow stand positions and look at building up strength for those handstands specifically. Um, and one thing that's going to be really important if you didn't, if you haven't warmed up yet, make sure you check out one of our first videos that we did with um, with Sarah on shoulder mobility and getting better range of motion at the shoulders for these overhead positions as well as how to warm up and fire up some of the uh, shoulder stabilizers to get yourself ready. We've obviously done those um, and we're building on top of now those frog and crow stands that we looked at in uh, the part two, the second video that we did. Um, and in that, when we went into headstands, we're talking about creating um, a triangle with your head and your hands and that point that we were creating then is going to be vital when we're going through the range in these pike push-ups that when I'm doing these pike push-ups I'm not taking my head down in between my hands that flares the elbows out to the side jacks the shoulder forward uh, and puts this into a really compromised position which could eventually lead to injury if you carry on doing it like that it's also not uh, biomechanically in a, the best position to produce force for the shoulder so you want to put yourself in the best position possible to produce the most amount of force so um, I'll just give you a nice little demo, I'll try to, I'll try to make it nice. <laughs> um, so, if you think about those uh, tripod sort of positions that you were getting into, hands, the same as the frog stand or crow, and the hands are shoulder width apart, I'm gripping with those fingertips and the base of the palm is on the floor. But I'm going to go, I'm going to start in a push-up position and then I'm going to walk my feet forward so that my, I'm starting to try and put my bum nice and high in the air and I'm trying to st um, put that the hip like as far over my shoulders as possible and then from there going to lower down and take the head not between the hands I said I'm going to take it forward to make that triangle and then I'm going to drive back up so the head is making a triangle with the hands I'm trying not to use much weight through my feet as possible and all that drive is coming through um, the shoulders if that's difficult one of the tools we use in the locker is um, an eccentric or which is basically the lowering motion where um, I'll be controlling the motion on the on the on the deceleration of the exercise so the lowering portion and not worrying about coming back up but it's still going to help me build that strength and I'm and I'm creating that nice strong uh, position around and building strength around the front or anterior part of the shoulder because I am taking that head down forward um, which is going to help me with those frog crows and um, eventually handstand handstand push-ups hopefully one day for this okay so um, I would just be st the same starting position but I just lower under five seconds four three two one so the head gets there I can put the knees down and I can go back and I can go back to my start position that's a great way for you to build up the strength whilst through that full range of motion before you can come back up um, now Sarah's going to show us um, another great regression because that even in itself is still hard and the really no way I can do that yeah I just know that's I'm gonna slam down and you, you and you'd say and you see from a lot of people that come into the classes that a lot of the time um, the sh they know and they even say and I've, I've spoken to people myself where they, they know they need to, make, to get their shoulders stronger but almost that's even that's almost too difficult yeah. so um, working through some partial range that we can keep control of is a great way we can do that and we're going to show you you can use your blocks for yoga yeah. always with, with, blocks. with blocks <laughs> but the blocks this could be but just thinking practically it could be it could be anything yeah it could be um, sort of two books whatever you want so anything even if you're just training at home that you can find at home it doesn't have to be a purple yoga block you don't have to go and and, and spend loads of money on that sort of thing um, now this is effectively raising the floor up so she doesn't have to go as low um, What's really important when you are doing those eccentrics is I did a five second lower. It's about creating tension. If you just free fall down, your head just hits the floor. You're not, gonna, you're not creating any tension, therefore the muscle isn't working. You're not gonna create any adaptation, i.e. you're not gonna build any strength. So it's really important that you've got the control. This is a nice way where we could do a lower, but also you could get them to a position where you could probably get a height where you can still actually push back out. But if you wanna give us a little demo of um, what that lower would look like with the Start in our push-up. Yeah, you're starting. Yeah, starting your push-up position. 
and then you walk in the feet forward you've got so much more um, hip mobility and hamstring mobility to me that you can get into a crazy position over there but that was just that's far, far enough for that's absolutely fine yeah about there's yeah that's absolutely fine then it's just I'm taking to do a five count down yes so then we're just we're taking the head so see where she's positioned look this isn't in the mid this isn't in the middle of the hands it's forwards because it's going to make that triangle with the head so she's going to lower and take the head down so four three two one nice good and then you can just put the knees on the ground go back up and what we'd be looking at would be three to five reps and looking at three to five sets um, with a good rest two three minutes rest in between those sets that we're trying to build this would be what we'd classify as like applied strength or maximal strength we need it's it's tough you, it's not something you can do easily 10 12 of these so we need to give ourselves that rest yeah. in between i found that really hard that yeah. was me working to my absolute Hardest I yeah, but can you imagine if you if you put together, you started doing that once a week, yeah. and you did you did that literally once a week, and after three, four, five, six weeks, the type of strength that you'd be getting, and how much easier to make some of those uh, crow stands, uh, crow poses, and some of those transitions a lot easier. I'm going to do it once a day. Is that once, not once, no, no, once a week. <laughs> <laughs> once a day, you can't do everything. So you do something every day. You never rest. You never rest. You never recover. <laughs> Then you're never going to actually. Uh, week, all that happens is. Once a week seems long. Uh, you could you could pro like twice, twice a week. You don't need to do okay. more okay. because it's the same exercise. You can do different things, but just hammering the same exactly. thing every day. It is a question we get. Someone before said, "Oh, sure, I'm going to." They were, I think they were working on maybe like a front lever or something. Like, Shall I do it every day? I'm like, well, when is when's your body going to yeah, recover? Sure. Um, so the other thing I will just show this front arm is if you have got like blocks like these like i said it could be books if you wanted to make it a little bit harder one thing we can do is we can raise the feet up so um, i'll just show you that one first i could put this up or I, this could even be like a chair the higher i put my feet that's gonna I mean i can uh, place a little bit more load on the shoulders and so i can get into that position and that's going to make that make that harder because i'm getting more load going through the front because i'm starting to tip my weight forward the other thing you can do is effectively rather than um, lifting them up like we do with Sarah what I can do is actually lift my hands up so I've got that space to take my head down further because the thing you're limited by with your uh, pike push-ups and handstand push-ups is that you can only go down as far as the floor is so if we raise the hands up I can do so I go push-up position I can go here I'll just come this way around so that you've been able to see it as I take that down and now my hat my head is going lower so my shoulders are actually going through a greater range of motion I'm so pleased in that to movement. see you using stuff like this because it's one of our biggest um, ongoing kind of debates is, you know, these are not remedial aids. Oh. Uh, when we, you know, it's yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever, it's about, as you said, taking yeah. the floor further, bringing it closer like I needed. Yeah. Uh, we have people who are hyper, really quite flexible. So the thought of getting their nose to the floor is like, eh? Yeah. So we raise their feet up. So these things yeah. are... Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's really key. Not to be underestimated. We, we, we talk about some of these things being tools in the locker, so if I'm raising my hands up so I can go to a deeper range, the greater angle at the, at the shoulder, the angles and levers tool, um, I can make that harder, or like with Sarah, we stacked them up and we went down to a, lo a smaller range of motion to make it applicable to her. So we can be doing the same exercise together, we can be working out together using these two things, but we just both use them differently. Yeah. Um, the other thing if you want to get really hot with it is you could put the feet up on a, a chair and then you could have your hands raised up as well and that's going to add it the both aspects to make it even harder but it's going to help you build up loads of strength for that if you can um if you if you are starting to build up strength and it's less of a maximal strength exercise like it was for um sarah more like um, if i could do 10 or 12 of those i might be working two three sets of those 10 12 reps and i might only need to give myself 60 to 90 seconds rest for them because I'm building a bit more of uh, capacity strength or sort of strength endurance or hypertrophy. Um, but that's going to help you build up some strength that you're going to be able to use for, for your handstands, for your inversions and, and for us lots. Like all, of, all of our calisthenics things that we do is require shoulder strength. Um, so it's, it's really, it's something that um, why me, Tim, we definitely do some pike push-up variation once a week. So we, do, we do that once a week, but we definitely don't do it every okay. day. <laughs> Um, so hopefully 
that gives you some ideas on how it's one exercise but how versatile it can be and you can start to use these tools to be able to make it um, applicable to your strength levels and how you can carry on um, progressing and really help I hope that it helps you with whether you're trying to do yoga and get stronger for that or whether you're doing calisthenics you want to get stronger for that I really hope that it uh, or I hope that it will but I know that if you do those correctly and follow those things it's going to help you progress and it's not just one thing there's loads of little ways that you can make it a little, as you get better you have to make the exercise get a little bit harder so that you can keep progressing and keep progressing but small steps at a time um, so yes thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed make sure you click up there so you don't miss out on any of our other content if you're just getting started with kind of extension you're a beginner we've got a free beginner's guide which is down there that you can get get that from the website for free and then if you didn't see the previous uh video we did with sarah hotpod that's up there by sarah's head until next week class dismissed